I've been working with the development weeklies of FreeCAD for a bit now. FreeCAD is now in Feature Freeze and will soon go into UI Freeze as well. So it's mostly bug fixes between now and the end of August. This is a good time to go over a few useful new features. I already talked about the fixes for the topological naming problem in a previous video. Now for the new constraint handling in the sketcher. I'll create a new sketch on the XY plane. Create a rectangle not centered on the origin to make some of the new features more visible. First automatic symmetry constraints. I'll choose the circle tool and move the cursor along a line in the rectangle. Note how when I approach the midpoint of the line it offers a symmetry constraint. If you want a constraint other than symmetry, it's probably easiest to create the circle away from the midpoint and then move it into place. Of course you can also just delete an unwanted symmetry constraint. Next up is the multi-dimension tool. I'll select that now. If I click on the circle, it adds a radius constraint. The first click establishes the constraint. Now I can move the call out to where I want it and place it with a second click. That brings up the dialog where I can set the value or set it to be a reference. Now I'll trim off half of the circle. One thing to note so you don't get confused, the display for the radius of an arc now includes a continuation of the circle to make it more clear what the constraint refers to. At first glance, it's easy to mistake that part of the callout for geometry, so note the color difference. I'll select the dimension tool again and click on the line. It correctly infers that I want a horizontal distance constraint. Clicking on a vertical line, it infers a vertical distance. If I click on the horizontal line, it again infers that I want a horizontal distance. But if instead of placing the call out on an empty spot, I click on an adjoining line, it changes to an angle constraint. Note how as I move around my selection, it makes some decent guesses about what angle I might want constrained. To avoid over constraining, I'll make this a reference. Next, I'll just add a couple lines. Now I'll select the Combined Horizontal Vertical tool. If you select a line that is mostly horizontal, it infers a horizontal constraint. As I click the next line, you can see that this sometimes can get you into trouble. I'll undo that, move the line to be clearly more vertical, and apply the constraint again. Helpfully, if you just can't get it to infer what you want, the old single constraint tools are all available in the drop down selection. I'll apply the dimension tool to the origin point. As you can see by moving around, I can change the inference and even its inference of what I want the constraint in reference to. Once you place the call out, dragging it around won't change that inference. So just drop it somewhere where the correct inferences are made, and then drag it to where you want it. This isn't a new capability per se, but it's a really nice quality of life improvement that can make your workflow a lot smoother. I'm sure I'll be using this more and more as I get used to it. It probably won't be long until it's a little hard to go back when using older versions. That's one reason I waited until close to the new stable release to do much with it. To show the next couple features, I'll close and hide the sketch. I'll draw a new sketch on the XZ plane and make a sort of wedge shape with the polyline tool. Close the sketch and extrude to 50 millimeters. Given something like this, it can be hard to select specific features. 
try to select an edge and it seems to want to select the face. Especially trying to select a vertex, you tend to get an edge or a face instead. Now we have the new selection filter. Just drop it down and select the type of geometry you want to select. The last entry, All Selection Filters Cleared, lets you select anything just like the old behavior. I'll filter to vertices. Now that's the only thing it will select. In the past, the only real hope was to go into the view pane and make vertices comically large so you could easily select them. I'll do that now just so you can see what I'm doing in the video. Now if I change the filter to Edge, that becomes all I can select. Likewise for Face. Unless you're actively selecting a particular thing, it's probably best to leave the filters cleared. Next, the new viewpoint tool. If you want to look straight down at a feature, it's easy enough if it's coplanar with one of the cardinal planes, or even at a midpoint between them. But there are often faces that you just can't get the right view on no matter how you rotate, and since it's not on a cardinal plane, the cube won't help you. Just select the feature and click the new Align to Selection tool. As you can see, it rotates the point of view to be normal to the feature. Technically, those are ease of use or quality of life features as well, but getting it done without them can be such a pain, they feel a lot like new capabilities. There's plenty more, and I'll probably follow up with highlights on some of the other new features as things get finalized. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.